What is going on guys? It is WrestleMania here, back with some more news. Join us now as we look at the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including Shelton Benjamin debuts on Dynamite, Bobby Lashley signs with rival promotion, all the details on AEW's television deal, serious concern for a wrestler who suffered a major injury, LA Knight plans are looking awesome, this is still banned in WWE, and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new videos on WrestleMania XL. Now let's do the intro and get straight into our first story. Our first story looks at Shelton Benjamin debuts on Dynamite. A Dynamite's five-year anniversary show featured plenty of action and surprises, including the debut of former WWE superstar Shelton Benjamin. Benjamin appeared during an interview segment with MVP when Swerve Strickland's manager Prince Nana confronted MVP, challenging him to a match. Shelton appeared with MVP, telling Nana that Shelton is president of the complaint department, leading to Nana backing down. As Shelton can still go in the ring, even at the age of 49. Could this be Shelton Benjamin's last run in wrestling? Next up, Bobby Lashley is All Elite. It looks like MVP and Shelton Benjamin aren't the only former Hurt Business members signed to AEW. Fightful Select is reporting that Bobby Lashley has signed a deal with AEW a number of weeks back, along with MVP and Benjamin. Don't be surprised to see Lashley debut sooner rather than later, and fans could also see a female member in MVP's new faction as MVP handed Mercedes Monet his card on last night's Dynamite. Next up, everything you need to know about AEW's new television deal. Atop of today's news is the announcement of the long-awaited rights deal between All Elite Wrestling and Warner Bros. Discovery. The deal has been the subject of speculation for over a year, particularly because industry observers claimed it was essential AEW becoming financially solvent. Let's look at everything we know. First, let's look at the announcement. Let's begin with the official announcement issued by Warner Brothers, as an excerpt that follows. WBD's networks and platforms will remain the exclusive home of AEW Dynamite Wednesday on TBS and AEW Collision Saturdays on TNT with enhanced distribution rights across social media platforms as well as building opportunities for additional AEW programming for linear and digital platforms in the future. In addition, AEW content will be found on WBD's Mac streaming service in 2025. Additionally, for the first time, all AEW Dynamite and AEW Collision programming starting January 2025 will stream live exclusively on Max, US subscribers only. All AEW programming airing on WBD's network will also be available to stream on demand on Max. And Max will also reportedly have the full library of past AEW television shows Dynamite, Collision and Rampage available to stream. Another aspect of the deal concerns AEW pay-per-views. AEW and WBD will also collaborate to distribute AEW live pay-per-view events on Max at a discounted price per event, with all the marketing and promotion of those pay-per-view events exclusively centered on Max. AEW pay-per-view distribution on Max will begin later in 2025, with additional information and pricing to be shared in the coming months. Now, this could be a boon for AEW fans reluctant to drop $49.95 for an AEW pay-per-view. According to Variety, the financial details were not released, but the entertainment industry news site noted, financial terms of the deal were not disclosed, but according to sources, the deal is valued at upwards of $150 million per year when all elements are taken into account. However, this could actually be a lot more, as the AEW deal is bigger than you think. Now, a new report from The Observer suggests AEW will receive more money than originally reported for the new rights deal. $555 million over three years. It averages at $185 million a year. It starts lower, the middle year will probably be about that, and then the third year would be up from that, and the fourth year will be way up. I'm presuming it includes the buying of the pay-per-view in that figure. AEW is a privately held company, which means it isn't required to release its financials to the public, unlike WWE, which is a publicly held company. This is why fans and pundits have questioned whether AEW has been profitable during its five-year run. But what is next for AEW? While nothing has been confirmed, there's speculation on more details about the future of AEW programming. It's believed that Rampage's days are numbered and that Dynamite and Collision will be the only two shows airing on WBD outlets. However, Fightful Select noted that Rampage could end up elsewhere. The rumors of AEW shopping a new show to a different network, such as Fox, continue as AEW's deal with WBD is no longer exclusive. There are even rumors that AEW could revive its AEW Dark program that aired on YouTube, but this is only wild speculation. What about the future of AEW pay-per-views? One unresolved question is how much AEW's pay-per-views will cost on Max. That is what the reduced cost will be. Fightful Select noted fans were disappointed that AEW isn't offering their shows for free on Max, but as Fightful noted, when we asked those in AEW, they pointed at the UFC point of view of if you cannibalize your pay-per-view model, you can't go back. 
A good example of this is WWE moving to the network format and now being unable to capitalize on big pay-per-view sales now that they're hot. Although one WBD source said that the ease of access of WWE PLE events could be the big reason they're so successful now. We're told that this model could end up changing for AEW WBD down the road. Next up, good news for NXT as it gets a huge ratings boost. NXT's debut on CW is getting plenty of attention for all the right reasons as the show's ratings were the highest in the year. Equally good are the numbers for the NXT Women's Championship match between Roxanne Perez and a challenger Julia. Last night's WWE NXT broadcast television debut, the CW Network, delivered the largest audience for the weekly program since October 2023, with 895,000 total viewers, up 44% compared to last week's episode on cable TV. The premiere peaked at 965,000 total viewers from 8.15 to 8.30 p.m. and was the number one telecast on the CW this year among adults 25 to 54, 406,000 and adults 18 to 49, 354,000. An interesting takeaway is how the ratings peaked during the Roxanne Perez vs Julie match, which suggests how much interest there is in the two superstars and possibly the entire women's division. What do you guys think of the ratings? Do you think NXT is now back on track? Could they hit 1 million viewers soon? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, a major Crown Jewel announcement at Bad Blood. I look for something big at Saturday's Bad Blood event that will lead into Crown Jewel. Current undisputed WWE Champion Cody Rhodes spoke with Pat McAfee recently, revealing the WWE's championships not on the line this weekend, but there is something that happens at Bad Blood. I guess a video package or vignette that's going to play in the show. I've got to keep it vague, but there are big title implications for Crown Jewel. Sorry for being so vague, but a little spoiler there. With the WWE always planning ahead, it's clear the WWE never pauses after a PLE. Instead, the company goes in guns blazing, and it wants to make fans eager for the next show. What do you think about Cody's comments and what do you think they could mean? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, serious concern for a wrestler who suffered an injury. Now there was major concern for Sammy Guevara during a Ring of Honor taping. You may have seen initial reports that Guevara's match against Serpentico was stopped after he took a bad fall. He was stretched to the backstage area leading to plenty of concern from fans about his condition. Pro Wrestling Torch's Wade Keller has an encouraging update though, as PW Torch has heard from multiple sources that while there was serious concern for his well-being after the incident among his colleagues and management, after being treated and evaluated, he was walking around backstage on his own. In fact, if he had known he was stretched out of the ring earlier, it wouldn't have been obvious to anyone. The Observer's Brian Alvarez had this to say about Sammy's bad bump. I was told that at the time they were pretty concerned about it, but he was in the trainer's room later and seemed to be okay, although I'm sure he'll be in a concussion protocol for a while. Now we hope Sammy's okay and we send the best wishes to him for a fast and full recovery. Next up, LA Knight plans are looking awesome. LA Knight could still be facing one of his greatest challenges yet, at least according to a new report from WrestleVotes. Rumor has it that the current United States Heavyweight Champion could be set for a series against Randy Orton. While there's been speculation that Orton will eventually challenge Cody Rhodes for the Undisputed Championship, this sounds like a great way to keep Orton busy until then. If nothing else, it's a great opportunity for Knight, who could benefit from defending the title against a main eventer. Next up, CM Punk reveals a last minute deal. What was going on backstage at 2023 Survivor Series before Punk made his writer's return to the WWE? I actually may be surprised to learn that Punk and WWE didn't reach a deal until the day of the show. Punk recently appeared on the No Contest Wrestling podcast, explaining how close things came at Survivor Series. Personally, there could have been a possibility if there was some hard nose in the contract, but I think both sides were eager. And then you get the lawyers involved, and it's a lot. The Second City Savior detail how things look good between him and the WWE until the lawyers got involved, leading to questions whether he'd ink a deal or walk away. According to Punk, he waited in Triple H's office while attorneys finished up the contract, with the game telling Punk, if this gets done, we'll wait, and when the time is right, we'll bring you in through Gorilla. What do you guys think of how close things came between Punk and the WWE? And finally, this is still banned in WWE. And last but not least, Vince McMahon is gone from WWE, but one of his long-standing rules is still in effect. The universe has seen many changes to the product since McMahon's abrupt exit, but according to The Observer, the use of the word belt is still a taboo. It was revealed on the Wrestling Observer Radio, even with Vince McMahon being gone, they can't say belt. They brought out new belts, and no one can say the word belt. And you care if the WWE uses the word belt? Why do you think the ban is still in place? Let us know in the comments down below, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.